I wanted a custom light bar for my setup, something tall, slim, and smart controlled. I looked around online, but nothing really matched what I wanted. So I decided to just make my own. What I ended up with is this 3D printed light bar, about 40 centimeters tall, powered by an LED driver board from Seed Studio and controlled with an ESP32 C3. It's got 10 LEDs inside, and the cool thing is I can run it manually with my own code or control it through WLED and even hook it up to Home Assistant. In this video, I'll walk you through the process, the design, the build, a couple of challenges I hit along the way, and then show you how it all comes together. I started with an STL file I found online. The idea was good, but the problem was that it was just too small for what I wanted. So I jumped into FreeCAD and designed my own version, scaling it up and tweaking the proportions to make it stand around 400 millimeters high. The bar itself is pretty straightforward, just a tall housing to hold the strip and diffuser, but the diffuser turned out to be a bit of a saga. My first attempt left a visible split right down the middle where the two halves join. It worked, but the seam was distracting once the LEDs were on. So I redesigned it with a small lip on one side that overlapped the joint, making it slide neatly over the other piece. Once glued in place, it hid the seam a bit better, and the light diffusion looked slightly more natural. It wasn't a huge improvement, but the tweak did make a small difference. Inside, I used a 10 LED strip, which is powered by Seed Studio's LED driver board and controlled by an ESP32 C3. You might be wondering, why use a separate LED driver board instead of just wiring the strip directly? The driver board basically acts as the middleman between the ESP32 and the LEDs. Make sure the strip gets the right power and stable signals, which helps everything run smoothly. It can handle both 5V and 12V strips, and it's built to work reliably with addressable LEDs like WS2812 or NeoPixels. It also adds a bit of protection so you don't accidentally damage the LEDs or the microcontroller. And because it's designed to work with boards like the ESP32, it makes integrating with things like WLED or Home Assistant much simpler. In short, the ESP32 focuses on sending the commands and the driver board takes care of delivering clean power and signals to the strip. It just makes the whole setup more reliable. I really like using the C3 because it's small, efficient, and works perfectly with both direct coding and WLED. Originally, I actually tried a different strip, but I was pulling my hair out because the first one or two LEDs on that strip just wouldn't behave, no matter what I did. I went through all the usual checks, wiring, code, power, and even tried another strip from the same manufacturer with the exact same result. Eventually, I swapped it for a strip from a different manufacturer, and the problem disappeared straight away. Finally, everything lit up the way it should, which was a relief. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can still build something similar. The key components are the LED strip, a driver, and an ESP32 board. For the housing, you could use an aluminium LED channel with a frosted diffuser, or even repurpose something like PVC pipe or an acrylic tube. It won't look identical to my design, but functionally, it'll work the same way. Now, in terms of control, there are a few different ways I can run this light bar. The first option is manual coding. You can definitely write your own sketches for the ESP32 with things like fades or custom animations, but I'm not going to dive into that here. The other methods I'll show you are way easier for quick, simple effects. What I think is way more fun though is running it through WLED. WLED is free firmware you flash onto the ESP32, and it's basically plug and play for addressable LEDs. The flashing process is super simple. There's even a one-click installer that handles everything for you. Once it's running, you just connect to it on your phone and suddenly you've got full control. Brightness, colors, effects, and presets, all from the app. The amount of built-in effects is insane. Everything from subtle ambient glows to wild rainbow animations. You can also save and recall different presets. For example, you might have a warm white preset for use as a desk lamp, a nightlight setting for evenings, and then something more dynamic like party mode when you want a bit of color and movement. WLED can even react to music, so if you're running it in the living room or gaming setup, the light bar can pulse and shift along with the beat. It also has scheduling and timers built in, so you can set it to turn on or off automatically at certain times of the day. And it doesn't stop there. It also has a web interface, so you can control it from a computer as well. Once you dive in, it's kind of hard not to get carried away experimenting with all the options. On top of that, WLED integrates directly with Home Assistant. 
So if you're running a smart home setup, the light bar just shows up as another device you can control, automate or tie into scenes. For example, you could have it pulse gently when you get a notification or turn it on with the rest of your lights at sunset. My setup is still pretty simple, but even just having brightness and color controls in the dashboard makes it feel like part of the whole system. Like I mentioned earlier, the diffuser was one of the bigger headaches. The seam down the middle was really noticeable at first, so I redesigned it with that sliding lip to overlap the joint. Once it was glued in place, it looked a bit cleaner and the light diffusion was slightly better. It wasn't a massive change, but it did help. The faulty LED strip was the other major hiccup. There's nothing more frustrating than debugging for hours only to find out the hardware was bad from the start. But once I swapped it, the whole thing just worked exactly how I imagined. Sometimes DIY projects are like that. Half the battle is just troubleshooting what went wrong. So here's the finished build in action. The 3D printed housing stands tall and slim and the diffuser softens the LEDs nicely so you don't see hot spots. I've got 10 LEDs running along the bar, but because of the diffuser, it feels like a smooth, even glow. With WLED on my phone, I can flip between different modes instantly. From a calm, warm white for ambient lighting, to colourful gradients, to animated effects. And with Home Assistant, I can tie it into the rest of my smart home setup. It's versatile, it's fun to use, and it's something I built myself, which makes it even better. Let's talk numbers, and why doing this yourself can really pay off. The LED driver board cost me about $4.90. The ESP32C3, which handles all the control, was about $5. The LED strip, a 1 meter cuttable strip, came in around $2.50. For filament, I bought a 1 kilogram roll for about $13, and I used less than half of it for this project. So when you add it all up, driver, microcontroller, strip, filament, plus a few extras like wiring and connectors, you're looking at well under $20 to $25 US dollars total. Now compare that to a commercial option like the Philips Hue Play light bar, which sells for around 84 US dollars. And even then, you're tied into the Hue ecosystem. You need their bridge to get it working properly, and while it can integrate with Home Assistant, it has to go through their system first. With the DIY route, you're in full control. You decide the size, the shape, how many LEDs you want, the diffuser design, and how it integrates. WLED and Home Assistant give you open source flexibility without being locked down to a single app or ecosystem. So that's my DIY LED light bar build. A mix of 3D printing, a Seed Studio driver, an ESP32C3, and some smart lighting magic with WLED and Home Assistant. The cool thing about this project is that the strips don't necessarily need to go inside a bar like this. You could stick them under a desk, behind a monitor, or along a wall. The control system works the same way. If I were to rebuild this, I'd definitely spend more time refining the design, especially the diffuser. It works, but I think there's room to make it look even cleaner. Another idea would be to scale it up by making multiple bars and syncing them together through WLED. That way you could create a more immersive effect across an entire room, or even use them as an accent light for a full setup. I'll drop links in the description for all the parts I used and a copy of the STL file I designed, in case you want to try making your own version. If you enjoyed this build, give the video a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more projects like this one. I've got a few more smart home and DIY electronics projects coming soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.